scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done me well, Jesus. You know, as I took out time to reflect on my own life, I just began to nod my head and I was, I was literally, I'm not an emotional person. People say I don't cry. I say you are joking. You are just not there when I cry. I don't cry. I don't waste my tears for vanities, but I cry. When it is time to cry before God and I sat back thinking about my life, it's such a great blessing to be me. And I'm grateful to God. I took out time to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is already a message for someone you came here grumbling, complaining. I was told a story of someone who was angry with God and life and he got a rope and was looking for a corner to hang himself. Angrily moving. And while he carried the rope and he was on his way going, he saw some beggar who was seated and was watching him and he said sir where are you going he said to hang myself i'm tired of god tired of life and he said please two requests since you are going to die can you remove your clothes and help me with it after all you are going to die so what are you covering again and the man stood there and thought oh so these clothes i'm wearing that i take for granted is someone's prayer point some of you have come writing all kinds of things and you will receive but you see, you must always pay attention to the things that he has done and the things that he's doing for life, for health, for wisdom. You may not have money, but all your friends are godly people. You may not have resources at the moment, but there is wisdom. There is understanding of scripture. Hallelujah. We thank you in Jesus' name. So learn gratitude is something that I learned is a powerful spiritual mystery. Gratitude is a multiplier. Please listen, everybody. Gratitude is a multiplier. Anything you say thank you for, you are authorized to have more of. Let me take it again. Gratitude is a multiplier. Anything you can thank God for, you are authorized to have more of it. Father, thank you for wisdom. What you just said is, Lord, I'm ready for a higher dimension of wisdom. Thank you for 10 Naira. You are saying I'm ready for 100 Naira. You grumble over 10 Naira, you are ready for an empty pocket. Are we together? You subscribe for more in the spirit by thanking God for what he has done. Lord, I'm trusting you for this level of the anointing, this level of wealth, this level of influence. I am a pastor. Thank you because I have 10 members who are faithful. And God says, you can thank me for 10 members, you are ready for 30. Thank you, oh God, for 100, you are ready for 1,000. Hallelujah. You must learn gratitude. Learn gratitude. This is my first message to you, my precious people, and then to the body of Christ.
there are many legitimate reasons to complain many legitimate reasons to see as though god is supposed to have done this and has not done that once you program yourself to always see what god is doing for the things you have done for the battles you have won only you are worthy of my praise we magnify your name for the things you have done and the battles you have won only you are worthy of my praise we magnify your name one more time for the things you have done and the battles you have won only you are worthy of my praise do you know when you get busy thanking god you will not even know when the next miracles arrive while you are waiting don't sit down wondering waiting in unbelief will plant anger in your heart are we together and become a blockade to do, to the blessings that are on their way to you always see what god is doing this is a message for someone like our dear sister the very touching testimony there apostle i'm still waiting for a child but thank god you have a, a sensible husband that you can have a child with are we together there are people who have children one is an armed robber the other is a prostitute the other one is in the prison are we together the other one is in court what kind of children are those will you like to have those kind of children and they sit down and admire barren people and they say it was better i never had a child that is the hand of god there are others oh god you have not prospered me if you had prosperity without an understanding of preservation they would have killed you right from your village for being for being a prosperous person they would tear your destiny into pieces but god preserved you listen i'm not wasting your time i'm teaching you how to live with wisdom to thank god i live a very very grateful life all the time but at special moments like this in my life i take out time to thank him and don't you think i'm thanking him just because of the results and what is made out of my life i tell you sincerely even if it was not the case today i would still be grateful it's a culture you must practice you sit down with a cup of gari you say thank you while you are taking it don't just admire someone and say god are you not alive leave all those things and say thank you hallelujah for someone this is the message for you don't don't sit down wondering god won't you do this i know it's human but make sure that your heart is ever grateful one more time say thank you jesus i'm seeing so many people outside those of you outside shout a loud hallelujah praise the name of the lord the hand of god you're a man of god here in ministry thank god oh don't sit down and say, God, when will you bring members? When will you bring this? When will I smile too? When will I become a celebrity? And God will say, the day you don't want to become, the day you forget about that and focus on me, when I become the epicenter of your life, that is the day you experience my hand. Hallelujah. So my first message for you tonight is to be grateful as a culture don't wait until notable events happen in your life before you are grateful your gratitude must be a practice that comes to you by revelation you get up in the morning you thank him there's a song we used to sing whenever i see another breaking of day i say thank you lord thank you lord Some of you, the way you slept, if, if you had died like that, you would have gone to hell straight because you were not even saved. But you woke up and now today is a chance for you to be saved. Number two, 
My second charge to you tonight is that you must make up your mind to be a blessing by living for a cause beyond yourself. Write it down. Make up your mind. Use tonight's miracle service to make a determination that I will be a blessing and that by living for a cause beyond myself. Selfish living is a recipe for failure and frustration. Listen carefully. You must make up your mind as a covenant with yourself and your destiny today that I will be a blessing by living for a cause that is beyond myself. Make up your mind to live for a cause that is beyond yourself. In Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3, speaking to Abraham and prophetically to all believers, it says, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Say in me. Say through me. Shout it. Say in me. And through me shall all the nations, shall all the families be blessed. Do you know how rewarding and fulfilling it is to have people say you are the reason why I am blessed today? You are the reason why I came to know Jesus Christ. You are the reason why I've been healed today. You have become a conduit for my transformation. It is a very, very selfish and mediocre way of living when you are at the center of your whole world there are people who never nobody can say thank you because of you i've gone to school today because of you i have food to eat because of you i've given my life to jesus it's all about me no that's not a wise way to live you become a blessing not by taking. You become a blessing not just by being wealthy. You become a blessing not just by being enlightened. You become a blessing by living for a cause beyond yourself. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. Very quickly, Philippians 2. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, verse 2, reading to 4. Fulfill ye my joy, he says, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Verse 3, it says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, he says, let each esteem other. Is that in your Bible? Better than themselves. He's not saying to demean yourself, but he's, it's a state of mind. He said, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. In other words, let your life be a blessing to someone. Let your life be the reason why a family can smile. Let your life be the reason why a believer can become mature. Do not become a conduit for destruction. Do not become a conduit for the destruction of lives or families. No, your life should be a blessing. And that comes by living for a cause greater than yourself. Look up. Do you know that everything God created was designed to find fulfillment by living for others. A mango tree does not eat its own mango. Are we together? Yes. A banana tree does not eat its own banana. The beauty is that they go through that labor and grow, produce the fruits. Are we together? And then you come and take them. Whilst you are coming, you, you pluck the mangoes or the oranges with joy. And it does not feel bad because within it is capacity to produce again. That was the purpose of it, therefore. If for many of you, the reason why your life does not seem to find fulfillment, sometimes in spite of the physical things that keep coming, is because you have not sustained an orientation that is, is a more superior way to live when you live serving others. Spending your entire life looking for money, looking for fame, looking for a name, those things do not create fulfillment. Trust me. When you spend your life becoming a blessing, that someone looks at you and he says, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because of your life, God has helped me to be what I am today. 
the greatest testimony out of all the things that people say about me people send me thousands of text messages and I'm grateful for but the greatest testimony is not even healing it's not even you know all of these things but the transformation apostle thank you I met Jesus through your life or through your meeting my mind is changed today I'm a responsible believer a responsible father look what has happened the transformation hallelujah true leadership in the kingdom according to Matthew chapter 20 when you read from verse 25 to 28 Matthew 20 25 to 28 but Jesus called them unto him and said ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them and they that are great exercise authority over them 26 it says but it shall not be so among you whosoever will be great look at Jesus's definition the kingdom's idea of greatness whosoever will be great among you let him be your minister the word minister there is servant 27 and whosoever will be chief among you let him be your servant 28 even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto but to minister even to give his life as a ransom for many you know you are selfish when everything revolves around you it is me if you are in a group you are the only one who wants to be heard i am the one in fact let me tell you this your greatest testimony is the lives that can be changed through your life hallelujah are you learning yes if you come and testify and you tell me i bought a car i will pray for you and clap for you god gave me children pray for you and clap for you I am now a billionaire. I'll pray for you and clap for you. Doors have been opened. I'll pray for you and clap for you. But if you bring someone and say, Apostle, by the grace of God, God has used me to raise this boy from secondary school now to university. God has used me to bring this man. He used to be an unbeliever as a husband. Now look how this man is, is a sound believer. Look how he's running his family according to the will of God. Now you are speaking my language. Transformation. That it is not just about you I have this I have that don't get me wrong getting things are not I'm going to be praying for you but a, a a nobler way of living is when your entire life I rather live an average life by any definition you think and and transfer that remaining energy in lifting others and helping others than to live a life that we purport to be successful but at the end of it, nobody can become a testimony of your being alive. No. Make up your mind, second instruction, to be a blessing by living for a cause beyond yourself. You are a man of God. Realize that he called us into this work to serve, not just to make a name. He's not called us into celebrity living. If you want to be a celebrity, there are many other ways of making that happen. But if you sign up to be a minister of the gospel, your life should be ministered, a, a, a vehicle that ministers to people. And the truth is that if you are doing your job well, you will not remain small. The people will be too grateful to allow you to remain small. But you see, let me tell you, members and God's people are not fools. They know people who love them sincerely and are pouring their hearts to help them you can pretend it and fake it and say oh you know I love you but they look at you and they know that there is no genuine passion for them love is feelable compassion the desire to see people rise the desire to see people know God to be lifted to leave them better than you met them hallelujah People give to me a lot and I'm grateful and every time people give to me for me I almost feel guilty receiving from people because immediately I become indebted to them this is my assignment okay now you've given me this whatever the gift is how can I improve this person's life and then especially if it's from strangers what spiritual investment have I made in your life my greatest joy is to see lives change because of this grace that he has placed upon our lives that is why we stretch ourselves from pillar to post, from border to border, to make our contributions to see that lives are transformed. 
if that becomes your determination from tonight, shout a loud amen. amen. That I will live my life. And don't say I don't have money. It's a lie. If an armed robber kidnaps you now or your loved ones, in two days you will cough out money that you claim you do not have. So don't even bring those flimsy excuses. The Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart will be. The day you see a small child who 10,000 naira can help that child to go back to school. We are not talking about being a billionaire and being a... Number one, God will not even give you that kind of money because your heart is not inclined to being a blessing. Listen, I don't mean to frustrate your expectations tonight. Keep your prayer request. I will pray on it. But let me tell you sincerely, if you have 10 cars, you are not going to split your legs and put one in this Jeep, one in this, well, as, as wonderful as that is. If you have a bag of rice, this is the size of your stomach, as you are looking at me like this. Once it is full, no matter how greedy you are, God designed it that it will not enter again. You see the intelligence of God to teach you a lesson that nothing he gives you is all for you. Are we together? Nothing he gives you is all for you. There is bread to the eater and seed to the sower. One more time. Bread to the eater and seed to the sower. If you sow your bread, it's not wise. If you eat your seed, it's not wise. There are special moments where you can sow both bread and seed. It's called sacrifice. That you cast your bread upon the waters. He said after many days you will find it. But based on God's principle, the bread is for your eating. Eating, the seed is for your sowing hallelujah I've made a commitment that in life and in death I will be a blessing if I die today the only thing will just be that I didn't finish my assignment but I'm, I'm grateful that I'll be able to leave something that you can immortalize your impact beyond you all these things people run around God forbid I can talk about death because I will not die but if I die today you will try to pray to raise me back to life. After praying one by one, you will start leaving that room. <laughs> you will start getting tired and say, you know what? I'm sure he doesn't want to come back. And you will be right. And once that happens, you will just... Are we together? Yes. You will don't be in the ground and that's the end of it. Write all kinds of things. Cry and sing as if you will never recover. One week, I'm telling you, you are back. <laughs> How long? You will still remember and cry, but believe me, you will get back here. You will remember that you need to make money, you need to move around, and before you know it, that's it. But the point I'm trying to communicate is that if you become so attached to things in life, you are carrying a burden that by itself will kill you. There is nothing in this life. I've made a covenant with my life nothing will ever attach itself to me money fame thank god for those things but i see them as strange as they are you know how a wireless mic is you can benefit from it but it has no physical connection to you some of you as you are listening to me now is paining you because you came with all kinds of lusts the way you are connected to money connected to fame connected to everything i just want to make it and you will make it but the believer's orientation is that you're a missionary are we together now that all that god gives you while you serve his purposes should not distract you i'm saying this so that as i pray for you and the doors of finances open supernatural intelligence you have it at the back of your mind that the purpose of these things is to empower you you have been taught here but your focus should be to be a blessing. Serving Jesus, serving humanity. That is the way of wisdom. Number three. My third charge tonight is that you must become a passionate lover of God. Number one, I said to be grateful. Practice gratitude as a lifestyle. Gratitude must become a spiritual orientation that you burn 
on the tablets of your heart that for all seasons, regardless how comfortable and favorable they are, remain grateful. Number two, that you must make up your mind to be a blessing by living for a cause that is beyond yourself. You must erode that lifestyle of self-centeredness and begin to think of others, how your life can count by being a blessing. And then number three, that you must be a passionate lover of God and men. God and men. If you love God and you do not love men, you are a hypocrite. If you love men and you do not love God, you are self-centered. The truth is that if you truly love God in that order, you will love men. Matthew chapter 22 from verse 36. A passionate lover of God. Master, he said, which is the great commandment in the law? Reading to 40. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Next verse. This is the first and great commandment. Verse 39. It says, The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Do you know what this means? That all the law, the whole instructions that they got in the Old Testament was to achieve this purpose. To bring you to a point where you love the Lord sincerely and you love men. You must be a passionate lover of God. It's almost natural to love men when you love God. Look at me. To believe God does not necessarily mean to love him. You can believe him because you know he's mighty. That is not love. That is faith. Are we together now? The Bible says authentic faith works by love. Please listen. You must love God with all your heart. So tonight is an opportunity to rekindle your passion for Jesus. For many of you who, for whatever reason, your passion for him has gone down. Let me share with you very briefly, I thought to add this, there are a few benefits, I need to tell you this. We love God ultimately for who he is, but I will tell you in the name of Jesus and in the name of honesty, there are untold benefits that follow any believer who loves God. Let me give you a few of them. Number one, Exodus chapter 20 from verse five to six, we're discussing being a passionate lover of God. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Let's read verse 6 together. Ready? One to read. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Everybody say mercy. One more time, shout it, say mercy. mercy. So, you are entitled to experiencing the mercy and the kindness of God when you become a genuine lover of God. Most people think mercy is for sinners. No, the Bible says it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. If you keep favor and you keep mercy, I will pick mercy. Because until you are shown mercy, you cannot find favor. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. The mercy of God is powerful. Go online and listen to my teaching. I've done an extensive teaching on the mercy of God. Number two, what is the second benefit of being a passionate lover of God? Judges chapter 5 and verse 31. Judges 5.31, ever-increasing greatness. Ah, this is true. Ever-increasing greatness. Show me a passionate lover of God. I show you a man whose greatness will never plateau. It says, so let all thine enemies perish, O Lord, but let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might. It says, and the land had rest 40 years. The B part is the verse of emphasis. But let them that love him be as the sun. Give us Amplified. Let's see what Amplified says. Let them, this same scripture, Amplified. It says, but let those who love him be like the sun when it rises in his might. 
Does that look like the Bible, the scripture in Proverbs chapter 4, the path of the just? You want genuine greatness that does not go down? Be a lover of God. Passionately in love with Jesus. And I'm telling you, everything men see about you only becomes the foundation for the next level of greatness. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. I remember in one of my birthdays, I think three or four years ago, if I'm not mistaken, maybe three, four, the Lord spoke to me and the scripture he gave me was, Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on all sides. And I'm telling you from that season, it was a new dimension of greatness for me. 71, 21, Psalm. Thou shall increase. You are already great, but he can increase your greatness. When the great call you great, your greatness is increased. May that be someone's testimony. Amen. Shout a believing amen. amen. Thou shall increase my greatness, he says, and comfort me on all sides. So this is the second benefit of becoming a genuine lover of God ever increasing greatness can i give you one more romans chapter 8 and verse 28 i like this we know he says that all things work together for good to them that love god is that in your bible all things work together for good that means for a genuine lover of jesus christ there are no disadvantages in his or her life. And believe me when I say this, that in the dealings of God with men who love him, he can route anything, no matter how it starts, it will always end up a testimony. This is why you see the lives of people. It doesn't matter whether it's a problem with their job, whether it's a problem with their health. When you see anything that looks like it is negative in their life, they don't even mind it because this scripture has given them confidence. All things work together for good. So you can lose your job and whilst people expect you to be mourning and saying, how will my bills be paid? Supernaturally, someone just comes and says, I'm looking for a regional director here. Are you free? And you say, I just lost my job. And the person says, thank you, Jesus, because I've been looking for someone like you. How do you explain that kind of thing? Is it a coincidence? Mm -mm. All things work together for the good of them that love God. The good of them that love God the good of them that love God. Every time you love God, be rest assured that no matter what you see in your life at the moment, once it is uncomfortable, the love of God mandates and insists that he remains with you until it turns into praise. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. Because Jesus was a lover of God, his father, even when he died, he died for only three days. After three days, he came back to life. And that death that was supposed to be a thing of shame and disgrace has now become the hallmark of the believer's faith. The scars in his hand that was once upon a time a symbol of pain, weakness, and defeat is today a testament of glory. I've told you that when you go to heaven, one of the ways you will know who Jesus is is not by the light that emanates from him alone, not just by the crown upon his head, not just he that sits at the right hand of the Father, but the only one who carries this notable scar, the scar that purchased redemption. For someone, if the challenges did not happen around your life, you probably will not be here for this miracle service tonight. But thanks to whatever it is that has happened, now you are here. The love of Jesus brought you because he saw intrinsically within your heart that you were a sincere person loving the Lord. And he said, no, I will not let this woman, I will not let this man, I will not let this young lady, this gentleman, this preacher, I cannot leave you without help. I am still Ebenezer. I come through for those who love me. All things work together for the good. All things work together for the good. All things work together for the good. Provided you love him with all your heart. Provided you love him with all your heart. Not just serving him in hypocrisy so that you will receive things. Loving him for who he is. But that in loving him he has vowed that these among many benefits will come to you. Let me repeat them again. One, you become a candidate for his mercy and his kindness. 
to ever increasing greatness number three that all things work together for you all things it doesn't matter what it is hallelujah do you believe that praise the name of the Lord and now you have come tonight I truly believe that tonight um, is a special miracle service for many reasons among them I think moments like this are not just times for God to announce a man but it's 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 a moment where he stamps his hand upon the mandate and the covenant that has even brought you to that point where people can celebrate you this is what I believe now when you read the Bible birthdays were unusual moments in scripture among the many things that birthdays do birthdays were moments where unusual requests were granted you read the Bible hallelujah a prophet's head went away on a birthday or the request for it is that true a prophet mighty prophet coming in the spirit and the power of Elijah John the Baptist a little girl demanded for his head upon a plate and he said she wants the head in a charger and the king respected it and John's head went away and the Bible says if you've been evil know how to give good gifts that means tonight is an opportunity that you can cash in on and say father I know I believe you as always but taking advantage of this moment you see listen crops agriculturally speaking crops can grow at any time but when it is rainy season you have an advantage the burden of looking for water has been taken away from you am I right on that yes you can use irrigation and farm during the dry season as we call it in Africa and in Nigeria but once you are farming during the rainy season you now have an added advantage because the season itself supports you this is how today is that any other day would have still been safe to receive in Christ but that there are unusual moments where heavens the heavens are opened in a way so as to stamp the covenant that he has with his own and you can take advantage of that moment and believe what I'm saying you've seen people come to testify you should make up your mind that within the few minutes that we have today that every prophetic declaration that comes I'm not just going to shout amen carelessly you can do you know it is possible to walk out of this place just excited and then never return with a testimony because the Bible says they heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it I know that many of us have come with all kinds of burdens listen there is a mandate that God has placed upon our lives to see to it that weeping ends over every life that comes here it is true it's not just a desire it is a mandate when God gives you a mandate, the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards, 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 2, that a man be found faithful. When God gives you a mandate and makes you a steward, like Paul will say, that we are stewards of the mysteries of God. So he has granted us the grace. He's granted us the anointing. The speakings are not empty words, no. You receive them by faith and a spiritual reaction begins. Please, I want you to believe this. The miraculous is a possibility. Don't you get used to people playing games and just believe that everybody is playing that. Miracles are real. The power of God can be demonstrated here and now. Mama, listen to me. It is possible that as you have come here now, God can rewrite the stories of your, your destiny, your children, just like that. He said, let Naaman come and you will know that there is a prophet in Israel. And as soon as he came, he sent word. He said, tell him to go and wash seven times. And the king was offended. He said, I thought you would come out and salute me and with energy do a few things. And the prophet said, that is your business. You want to be well? Go and obey the instruction. And the little girl advised him again. You can imagine he went to um, uh, 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 the, the, the river and he went down once, twice, three times. If he was angry and offended, he would have gone back looking like a child who went to play in the mud five six and seven the bible says when he came out his skin became like that of a baby 
Listen, this grace that God gives men, eh, if it is not here, it is not here. It's as simple as that. The anointing is not something to play um, what we call abracatabra. If you have it, you have it. If it is not there, ladies and gentlemen, it is not there. You can assume it is there. Once it is there, it speaks. It's as simple as that. You actually believe that tonight you will live with no testimonies? No. 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 He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. For my foot to be moved, I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. I'm just a mortal, but you are the awesome God. Mortal man, awesome God. Ordinary men, I agree, but when his hand comes upon them. Ordinary men, I agree, but they cease to be noisemakers when that grace comes. Ordinary men, I agree, but not when the hand of the Lord comes upon Samson. You can bind him for as long as the anointing has not come. But when it comes, that, that chain becomes like flax before the fire. Ordinary men, I agree, but not when the Holy Ghost comes upon Mary. Is it not in your Bible? How shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? And he said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, that the power of the highest, the power of the highest. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the possibilities that happen when God is at work in a man. He said, great is the mystery of godliness. It is a mystery that takes the spirit for you to understand that ordinary men, frail in every way, you can see their frailty, but not when the Holy Ghost rests upon them. When that grace comes upon a man, Saul becomes Paul. When that grace comes upon a man, weak Gideon who is hiding suddenly can blow a trumpet and 33,000 people can come out. You will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. prophesy over a woman and tell her according to the time of life listen many many people do not know the power the anointing of the Holy Spirit is not electricity no no without the power of God we are noise makers on stage in fact a burden to civilization God will not gather you thousands and tens of thousands of you all over across this auditorium and outside how will he bring you here and just allow you to waste your time oh no you are not hearing cunningly devised fables ladies and gentlemen it was not only a message he gave with that message he gave power he said tarry now that you have received the message tarry until you be endued with power until you be endued with power against unclean spirits power against all the assaults of the enemy he said but you shall receive power after the holy ghost is come upon you it takes power to rewrite that narrative it takes power the speakings of men the difference between just an intellectual presentation and the speakings that become prophetic is the power of god You will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your power everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me.
you can doubt what a man is saying if he's speaking on his own but when that power comes when that power comes the prophet said bring me a mistrial and the moment they played the mistrial he said the hand of the Lord came upon him and he said you shall not see wind you shall not see rain yet by an agency that you may not understand and I'm saying this prophetically already to someone you shall not see wind you shall not see rain you shall not see wind my God fire is falling in this place you shall not see wind you shall not see rain yet your valley shall be filled with water you shall not see wind you shall not see rain yet your valley shall be filled with water when you read your Bible you find written here the works of God manifestations of the great power of God it was on account of the display of his power that they sang the songs of Miriam he said I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously even the horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea written here in your Bible was the manifestation of the hand of God revealed as ten plagues in Egypt from one plague after the other a testament of the almightiness of God is it not in your Bible that Joshua spoke to the Son and commanded it to stand still because victory must be wrought is it not in your Bible not a parable that the walls of Jericho such a formidable city that nothing went in and nothing went out but at that shout of the healer the shout of God's people the Bible says that Jericho sank it went down flat is it not in your Bible that once upon a time God's people in the days of Jehoshaphat three kings came together in unity that they were going to defeat God's people and he said no this matter is not about war when we fight physically we will lose get the worshipers to lead the way this one it, it has to be the Judah tribe that goes forward and the Bible says they began to sing that you are good and your mercies endure forever and the Lord set ambushment in the camp of the enemy they began to kill themselves and the Bible says the last help to kill the other person your Bible that the things that are written aforetime the Bible says they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of Scripture might find hope I believe the Word of God I believe in the power of God that when the power of God rests upon a man that is the end of the story your assignment is to do whatever it takes to secure the safe arrival of that power but when it comes but when it comes, the wonder-working power of God. In Acts chapter 8 and verse 5, the Bible says, Philip went down to Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. Verse 6, the Bible says, the people gave heed with one accord, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Verse 7, it says, for unclean spirits crying out with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies that were lame were healed. As a result, there was great joy joy in that city it says he that or you have asked for nothing it says ask and you will receive that your joy might be full he that or you have asked for nothing but ask ask without sparing he says ask without sparing you have a benevolent father which of you whose child will ask him for bread and you will give him a stone or fish and you will give him a serpent he said if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more your heavenly father will give that to those who ask him do you believe this I'm saying this to provoke faith in you you've heard the testimonies you can insist listen apostle when does my miracle happen the day your faith says today if your faith says July miracle service God will respect it if your faith says November miracle service or any of the services that's fine 
but I'm here tonight for those who are insisting that I will not allow this grace, I will not allow this moment to be wasted. Listen, can I tell you this? If it is not impossible, you don't need faith. The assignment of faith is to make impossible things become possible. Are we together? Once it is possible, you need wisdom. The assignment of faith is the moment it is a dimension that is beyond your human comprehension. Now step back and allow, and allow faith to work. The moment it is not impossible. So don't tell me, Apostle, you don't know. That, that is exactly the assignment of faith. To convert impossible things. Are we together? Yeah. Don't let the devil deceive you and say, how will it happen? How will it start? That is none of your business. Yours is to believe. Is it true that I will sing the songs of praises? Yes. The songs of, of joy and, and, and praises of gladness and, lament, and, and take away lamentation from my life. Yes, if you decide to. God is not a herbalist. You sit down and you're watching and you say, wow, these people are shouting amen. They, they are, it looks like they're joyful people. I assure you, we'll share the grace and you can carry your burden and walk away with it and be angry and say, God, don't make the mistake of Jacob. The Lord was in this place, he said, and I knew not. Not when his power is here. Once the power of God is here, then you look at what you have written and know that you are looking at it for the last time. You are looking at it for the last time. You are looking at it for the last time. Believe me when I say it, you are looking at it for the last time. The Bible says, just as you do not know the way of the wind or how bones are formed in the womb of her who is with child, so also you do not know the way of the Lord. No matter your level of intelligence, there are certain spiritual dynamics that you cannot understand. That one is the office of the Holy Spirit. He is the creative dimension of the Godhead. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, Now the earth was without form, void, Darkness was over the face of the deep. It says, and the Spirit of God, he still moved. Everywhere there is darkness, chaos, confusion, leave it to him. It is his ministry. He knows what to do with darkness. He knows what to do with confusion. He knows what to do with despair. Yours is to come to God believing according to Hebrews 11 and verse 6. It says, now without faith, it is impossible to please him. He says, for he that cometh to God must come believing, number one, that he is. He he exists then number two that he is the rewarder the rewarder rewarding you for traveling from outside of this nation to come for this service rewarding you from leaving your house inconveniencing yourself rewarding you for sitting outside scattered across the overflows God is the rewarder did you not know that your sacrifice is a memorial in the spirit that you arrived here since morning. Some of you have not eaten, but you've been waiting patiently. The rewarder. Some of you are men and women of God who have come, maybe not to be healed, but to contact grace. Because the assignment that is before you right now, the level of anointing you are carrying cannot suffice for that assignment. You will need an upgrade, an upgrade of unction. It says, take thee Joshua, in whom is the spirit, and lay your hands upon him, and take some of your honor, and give unto him, that the nation of Israel may hearken unto him. Believe God for impartations, impartations of graces. Don't roam around a low level of grace, anointing that almost is, is like it's not there. No. Listen, a phone light is light, but not enough to light a dark room. And so if your assignment is to light up a dark room and the light you have is a phone light, prepare to be frustrated, whether in ministry or whatever it is. Businessmen, you have come with your ideas. Now shift back and let the power to get wealth be added on your ideas. An intelligent idea without the power to get wealth will frustrate you. It will look as if the business will work, but it will not work. 
the assignment of your ideas and your value is to connect you to give you a space within the marketplace the assignment of power is to veto all kinds of prejudices and see to it that the word of the Lord speaks even concerning your business he said the power to get wealth the power to get wealth listen to me and I want you to believe that I know what I'm saying I don't mean to insult your pedigree I know that there are very successful people here but I know something small about success I can tell you no matter what you believe you have if you lack the power to get wealth you are going to be frustrated you will see things passing in front of you but for your hand to hold your portion it may never hold it I'm saying this particularly to businessmen. Don't waste your time moving around saying, I know this one, I know this one. There are forces in the spirit that control results. Your destiny helper does not come because you want them. There is something on you that draws them to you. They can pass you every day. You can even live in the same neighborhood. You can take your, they will never help you except that which is to come, comes upon you. Please listen to what I'm telling you. God wants to end this cycle of frustration. Oh, so, 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 so person in government. He is my man. Forget all that story. If you believe that magically, just because you are related, somebody will help you. Please think again. Think again. It doesn't work that way. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. He does not anoint your cup. It is your head he anoints. But when that anointing touches your head, your cup must react to it. Thou anointest my head with oil. My business runneth over. My job runneth over. The ministry God has given me runneth over. Do you believe what you are hearing? I'm saying that because we are going to step into a moment of intense prayer and I minister I'm going to be doing more of speaking by the spirit tonight I want you to believe it for God's sake do not there is no reason why we should share the grace and you walk back and not return with a testimony some of you this night even before midnight this night before midnight in the name of Jesus Christ my God will surprise you in ways that you will marvel and you will wonder every man is a maximum of four helpers away listen to me this has been statistically proven no matter what kind of help you need in this life from a human standpoint every man is maximum four helpers away for some of you you have struggled and there are wicked spirits that will not let you rise not let your children rise not let your ministry rise wicked spirits that have vowed as i brought your father down will bring you down too as i brought your sisters i will bring you down too welcome to the house of god this is mount zion and the bible says upon mount zion that there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of jacob shall possess their possession i'm telling you those those wicked negative demonic circles tonight right here in this place they will come to a permanent end in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah listen one of the graces i'm praying that you will receive tonight for the first time or greater portions of is the favor of god watch this samuel comes to the house of jesse the prophet is there the oil is there and they keep lining all kinds of people but the oil rejects them the person to anoint is there the oil to anoint is there a head that needs the anointing is there and the oil said no it says i will not rest go oh, do you not have one more son and he says there's one he said go and fetch him i will not sit what makes a prophet close to you the oil close to you your head is even close to it and yet the oil says i don't want you there is somebody i will not rest and they go and bring this smelly young boy he says that's it that's it many virgins together about to go and seeking hazarus many 
I'm sure everybody was practicing whatever skill they would use before him. And here was this village girl from Shushan. Show me Esther chapter 2 from verse 8 and 9. Watch this. I know we read 15 and 16 and 17, but let me show you 8 and 9. So it came to pass, when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, that when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan, the palace, it says to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also to the king's house. So she was one of the many to the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women, verse 9. And the maiden pleased him, Esther now, and she obtained kindness, amplified, I believe, or one of the versions will say she obtained favor of him. Watch this. This is what I want you to see. She obtained his favor. Read the next five words you can see. Use your mind and look for the next five words after favor. Are you ready? One to go. And he speedily gave her. Stop there. He did what? Ah. He did not just give. He speedily gave her. She obtained favor. Others will say, I need this oil. He will forget. After two, oh, I remember. But when a woman who was carrying favor, he speedily gave her. I'm showing somebody your next level here that things will speedily come to you that men will speedily give you. Believe it and receive it. He speedily gave her. Speedily gave her. Speedily gave her. That was the same grace that was upon the man called Nehemiah, the cup bearer of the king. The Bible says without him directly asking, the king looked at his countenance and said, Nehemiah, why is your countenance troubled? And he said, I'm troubled because I'm here serving you. And then the walls of Jerusalem is not built. And the king took that initiative by himself. I will give you all the materials that you need and I will write letters to ensure that no one harasses you, that all the resources you need to build, I will give it to you. And the Bible says he went and he began to build. And there were two men who came called Sambalat and Tobias. Their assignment was to stop him from building. But that was too late. The decree of the king had gone forth. And the Bible says with one hand he built and with another hand he held the sword. That's how we build in the kingdom. With one hand, your technical skills. But with another hand, the word of God is now making that happen. Do you believe that? One more scripture, Ezra 6, 14. Ezra chapter 6, 14. Someone's life is changing. Let's read together. Long read, but be patient. Ready? One to read. And the elders of the Jews built it, and they prospered, uh -huh, through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and then the other king, the king of Persia. Watch this now. Notice, God spoke, but men spoke. He said, they built it and prospered through the prophesying of two prophets. So God gave the decree, the kings agreed, but the prophets made it happen. God, kings, prophets. God gave the commandment. Three kings came together to agree on that commandment, but it did not guarantee that it would be built. The Bible says the actual prosperity of that building happened because of the prophesying of Haggai the prophet. The business will not thrive just because you have a great land that is visible through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to June Miracle Service where God will give you a testimony that is undeniable. 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 Are you ready to pray? Rise up on your feet and for the next two or three minutes, please no looking left and right with, with the determination of one who has come to receive whether you are in all the overflows hall one down to the basement outside following online i want you to open your mouth and in the name of jesus begin to make the please 
make decrees that that which I came for in the name of Jesus my expectations are met speedily so without delay without any wanting is someone praying without delay without any wanting without delay without any wanting without delay without any wanting someone is praying without delay without delay outside are you praying a global family following online make sure you are praying without delay by the power of the Holy Ghost go ahead and pray Ta -da 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 -da. Someone is praying. Please listen one more prayer point hear me at the start of this year God gave us a prophetic word that this is the year of open doors and I did teach you that there are three biblical ways we open doors number one is through the use of the right key you remember that that when you apply the right key you can turn a door open number two by knocking you can knock a door and the person at the other side of the door can open for you. But number three, that doors can be opened by the use of force. You can use force and this one does not just open, it breaks the door. Because when you open a door after you, it can close and your children may not be able to pass. When that door is broken, everybody after you can pass. Did the Bible not say at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang and the bible says the prisoners heard them it says suddenly there was an earthquake this was not a key this was not knocking there was an earthquake it shook the doors and all doors opened someone open your mouth and declare all doors all doors all doors all doors, all doors. All doors. financial doors marital doors career doors ministry doors are you praying all doors open all doors open all doors open declare ye that thou mightest be justified all doors higher levels of ministry all doors Hallelujah. 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 Do you believe what you just prayed? That gentleman there, lifting up your shoes. Come. You are a footballer. Huh? Where? In this Abuja. You believe in what you are doing? Yes, sir. Do you believe there is a grace? Yes, sir. I'm seeing you go to Europe. Amen. 
Is that your passport you're holding? Yes, sir. Your passport? Yes, sir. You came with your passport? Yes, sir. My friend, do you believe this? Yes, sir. Learn your skill to play. But my dear one, let me tell you, the hand of God can come upon men Amen. and pick ordinary men. Amen. That you believe this and you have come. Yes. Let me pray for you. When I, I saw it, I, I was just stirred in my heart. Remember, Amen. what God says to one, he says to all. It's not, this is not, hallelujah. It doesn't mean that if God does not, it, I don't have to call you, we'll spend the night doing that. Yours is for you to believe. Where are you from? Enugu State, Osoka. There is somebody that God is going to connect you to. Amen. He belongs to a football club called Eimba. Yes. I don't know any much about football or whatever it is, but you just believe from there, God is going to open you up. Amen. And you, will be, you will be surprised. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have granted us grace to lift men. Who is Silas? Silas. Silas. I'm hearing the name Silas. We may not have... I really want to pray to minister to the sick. Silas, where are you? Your story is about to change. Oh, you're a worker here. Silas. Your name is Silas? What do you do? I'm an architect. What do you do? I, I'm working on, uh, in the poultry farm. Okay, let me pray for you. He said, thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Father, I stretch my hands over Silas. Mariam, I'm hearing the name Mariam. Mariam, Mariam. Who is Mariam? Please make sure we don't just jump out. If you are not the one, even if it's your sister, just stand where you are and receive. Once you are not the person, your name is Mariam. Where are you traveling to? Sir. Huh? Canada. You are going to Canada. Yes, sir. When? We're processing it. My husband is there already. Did you tell me? No, How sir. do I look at you and know you are going to Canada? My dear, look at me. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing something stopping you and I don't mean to embarrass you, well, but we have to pray so that they don't bring a report from the hospital that will stop you from going. It is God that lifts men, and it is God that helps men. Hallelujah. Where are you from, my dear, this lady? From Imo State, Ma, sir. I want to pray for you. Thank you, sir. In the name of Jesus, Mariam. There are two people here. I'm hearing the cry of children, like children, babies. I'm hearing, I'm not saying you should come out, but I'm going to pray. I know I will have the time to speak, but I'm hearing the cry of children. And the Lord is telling me to release someone's child prophetically in the name of Jesus. I don't know who that person is, but this moment, as you are connected by faith, in the name of Jesus. Let it be unto you according to the word of the Lord. Let it be unto you according to the word of the Lord. Let it be unto you according to the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you, Mariam, you have come here in the name of Jesus. My dear, the one whose husband is in Canada, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, let the right of way be given to you. Right now, I release grace upon you. Find favor, favor with the embassy in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm hearing the Lord is saying I should tell somebody, weep not, weep not, the book is open, weep not, the book is open. You have cried and cried and cried. This is not just prophetic, this is physical tears. Weep not, the book is open. In the name of Jesus, I'm declaring by the Spirit, Rako Shalikaba. I'm talking to one of you in front here, weep not, the book is open, weep not, the book is open. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, because the book is open, let crying and mourning come to an end now. Let crying and mourning come to an end now. In the name of Jesus, my footballer friend, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. May God grant you grace that one day you will come and stand here and testify before the people of God. In Jesus' name I pray. 
an architect grace for you I decree and declare may God open doors that will surprise you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the mighty name of Jesus Christ now there's someone I usually would not God bless you I would not do this but God is insisting you have a court case I don't just mean a serious court case I don't know who that is God is just asking me to announce that you have a court case this is a serious issue and the Lord wants to show you mercy here who is that person come you are wearing white a court case is there someone like that you have a court case I want to pray for you if God brought you out is because he wants to change your story Please, if God calls your case, would you just double up so that we'll hurry up and pray to help us to attend to others too? Who is Adamo? Adamo. Ah, God. Oh. What's your name? Where are you coming from? You'll be. I will pray for you. What is your name? Dominion, sir. Huh? Dominion. Sir, can I pray for you? Yes, sir. Don't be embarrassed. Huh? You are in trouble. This trouble that I see you in, if God does not help you, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you behind bars. Yes, sir. I need to pray for you. You understand what I'm saying? I do, I sir. don't mean to embarrass you. I do, But sir. what you need is to pray for the mercy of God. Yes, sir. Because justice, the assignment of justice is to have his cause. But yes, now sir. we are standing to pray for mercy. You understand? Yes, sir. Yes, so I, I will not say more than that. But God is going to, we are sir, going to pray. Sir, I'm being summoned by a shrine. I'm supposed to die next tomorrow. My friend, don't worry. Just, you didn't have to. Don't worry. When you see me conceal certain things, don't worry. My own is to pray for you, okay? <laughs> Hello, Madonna. and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus because the Lord brought you here tonight let tonight for some of you be a night of mercy let tonight be a night of mercy let tonight be a night of mercy in the name of Jesus Christ hear me there are three of you here. The kind of money you are owing now, there is nobody on his own who will give you that money. You have missed the deadline by at least four months. You are in trouble right now. You need the mercy of God. The thing is not about begging the bank to give you another loan. There is a spirit behind this. No matter, see, look, I'm not against loan. Listen to me now, so don't misunderstand me. But you collect loan with the waster. There is a spirit called the waster. As you are collecting it, something will happen and you will keep going down until you are left with nothing. How do you think the wife of the sons of the prophet was so in debt that they were about to carry the children? It's good to do business. You can collect loan. There are many bankers here, but receive this grace first. Then whatever you have can now profit you. The prophet had to speak first. He said, go and borrow. So borrowing is not wrong, but borrow when you receive prophecy first. Personally, you know, but I respect whatever it is, but make sure that there are no spirits standing behind to just waste your resources. How many of you have tried to pour water in a basket? You pour water, will it ever get filled? No. You can stand there for 38 years trying to fill a basket. The first thing is to mend, to take away that basket and have a correct container. And in five minutes, your container will be filled. It's not that you are wrongly positioned. It's that what you are holding is not what the water can feel. Let me pray for you. You will watch the wonder-working power of the prophetic. I know the lion. I know the lamb. I believe in the lion. 
I declare supernatural help for you now. For those who have been appointed unto death, I call on the God of my covenant. May he show mercy. May he show mercy. May he show mercy. May he show mercy. He show mercy. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare the helpers that must arise and help you to take away shame and embarrassment. And hear me, for anyone here who is being oppressed because you do not have someone to help you, I pray let Ebenezer arise now. I'm not just praying for those in front, I'm praying for someone who is scattered. Anywhere you have been oppressed, I call on Ebenezer to arise for you now. Arise for you now. Arise for you now in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare the same way you came out here you will come and stand to testify in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ. so shall it be God bless you please return to your seat rejoicing hallelujah Hallelujah. How many of you are in business? Serious, active business and genuine, non-destructive business. Listen to my descriptions. I will never, never pray for anything that destroys genuine, scriptural business. Lift your hands and you are serious. I just sensed an anointing and I started seeing, you know how a printing, uh, this thing they use in the bank that prints money. What they call that thing? The counting machine. I just saw it now. And I know that there is a grace. I want to pray. Now, I know that there are people who think that, um, look, there is a prophetic dimension to wealth, though. Believe it. I want to pray that prayer. There are two of you right now. There is a strong anointing. The business you are doing now is not what you will be doing to prosper. Two of you. An anointing is coming on you right now as I'm speaking. Ta -da -da -da. I want to pray for you. Please believe this prayer and you will marvel and wonder at what the power of God is able to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, even as you have opened my eyes to see, I don't know whose hands these resources have must enter, but in the name of Jesus, in the name of he who died and rose from the dead, even the one who helps men, I release these resources to your hands now. I release these resources to your hands now. Speedily so. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When Elisha prophesied and said, by this time tomorrow, there was a man who looked and said, forget it. Even if God will open the windows of heaven, might these things be? And Elisha looked at him and said, because you have insulted God, you have insulted the prophetic, your eyes will see it so that you will know God is just, but you will not eat of it. And they trampled that man at the gate of breakthrough. One step for him to enter, he died because of unbelief. Let me pray for someone again who was too afraid to receive the first time. Perhaps because you think the amount you need is much. I'm talking of God who is Ebenezer, the stone of help. I decree and declare one more time, may these resources enter your hand. May these resources enter your hands. Hallelujah. On one hand, someone has never experienced as in the manner of women and on the other hand someone is bleeding and bleeding her health and her life almost going out there's a healing coming for someone right now 
this issue of is severe bleeding this thing has come with sometimes you stand and you start feeling dizzy because of the kind of problem that you have I'm going to pray for you because there is a miracle that is about this person I'm talking about you don't need to come out you are in the overflow outside the overflow outside there's a miracle that is about to happen to you now father in the name of Jesus Christ there's someone your left ear your left ear you don't hear with it totally I don't know whether you are here or you are you are following online but I want to pray for you now I began to hear a sound on my left ear and the Lord said I should pray in the name of Jesus the Son of the Living God I pray for that person right now may your ears be opened may your ears be opened may your ears be opened and for that lady I declare that this demonic hemorrhage this bleeding it comes to an end now it comes to an end now in the name of Jesus Christ I just saw light where the international guests are seated I just saw light there's one of you an anointing is coming on you please bring that person out when it happens I just saw light I don't know who is that person but you came with hunger and you came with desperation bring the person out bring them please be patient you are not wasting your time I want to pray for you whose mother is in the hospital I'm seeing someone's mother on a bed right now in a vision as I'm looking there's someone's mother on a bed in the hospital careful so that you don't where is she coming from I'm seeing South Africa written on her I don't know where this woman is coming from Leave her when she's ready. I'm seeing South Africa. I don't know whether it's her or whether it's someone else. But, but I'm seeing South Africa. And the Lord is asking me that she came to receive an anointing. This woman. Okay, when, when she's done. But there is a spirit. This woman needs to be delivered from a wicked spirit that has tied her life down. Let me stretch my hands and get that devil out of her first. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, I command that devil in the name of Jesus by the decree of the watchers you live now never to return again in the name of Jesus that which has tied down her life tied down the prophecy over your head out of her now in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray fire is about to fall the Lord is asking me to count four and as I count four, I'm seeing something that look like, um, you know, coals of fire. It's a mighty deliverance that is happening for people right now. And the Lord is opening my eyes again. I'm seeing people's right, their right feet, just the right feet, tied to chains. And then it's hooked to a wall. They can move, but not beyond a certain circle. It's not like you, you are moving, but once you get there, it brings you down. I don't know who those people are, but I count four and you shout Jesus. One, my God. Two, three, four, shout Jesus. I break those chains now. Bring them out. Bring them out very quickly. I break up my God secretary. I break those, help them please. I break those chains now. I break those chains now. Please bring them out very quickly, very quickly. In the name of Jesus, I'm still praying. Your right leg is not complete delay, but you move and you are in cycles. I want to break you free from that demonic thing. Please very quickly, whether you are an usher or not, help to bring them out. Let's save time. I'm praying again. At the count of three, shout the name Jesus. And that fire comes upon you and that demonic embargo must leave you. Are you ready? One, two, three, shout Jesus. I break you free. I break you free. He who 
the sun sets free is free indeed free indeed by the power of the holy ghost free indeed in the name of jesus the son of the living god free indeed by the power of the holy ghost please bring them out quickly so i can pray for them my dear where's where she come i've been asking that question where are you from you're from where south africa father listen i hope you are not embarrassed that i'm praying for you listen my dear your life will change in a way that will surprise you you hear me because i'm praying for you but there is something the devil has put in your stomach and i want to pray for you the lord wants to bring you deliverance i stretch my hands towards you and in the name of jesus every planting that is not of god right now i decree and declare let that planting leave you now let that planting leave you now let that planting leave you now hallelujah let that planting leave you now now there are families here that have been under listen carefully listen carefully there are families here that never rise beyond a certain level it's like an embargo has been placed no matter even some of them as i'm speaking they are abroad but it's the same thing they were facing in nigeria here that they are still facing there because it's not just about the location it's the grace that follows you the lord is asking me to release you from it in the name of jesus i'm praying right now every family that has been held down by witchcraft held down by satanic things right now i stretch my hands at the count of three let that fire rest upon you and let deliverance come receive it now one two three in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ Sir, please can I pray for you? This, this man, no, this man, um, yes, come. I don't know you, I hope you are not embarrassed. I want to pray for you. Yes, I will pray for you, but this, this is the man I'm talking about, yes. I want to pray for you. Two things, sir, please don't be embarrassed. I'm seeing a thermometer go up and down, up and down. And when I see a thermometer like that, it usually is something that has to do with BP. I will pray for you. And then number two, I'm seeing you stand before a door. You are shaking the door, but it's refusing to open. You are shaking it and it's refusing to open. And the Lord is saying, he that has the key of David, that can open a door that no man can shut. I want to pray. Can I pray for you, sir? I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Everything wrong with your health and your blood pressure, I declare it comes down supernaturally right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And then number two, that door that has refused to open by the God of heaven, the holder of the key of David, may that door be opened now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sir, please, what do you do? I'm a Inabalo, sir. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing you climb a ladder. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. And every time I see climbing a ladder, this is increased promotion. And the Lord is saying I should speak over your life. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus Christ that you are here. But I'm seeing favor coming from Lagos. I don't know what that means. I stretch my hands. Let that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. For all of you in front, I curse every foul spirit. Every spirit that has tied your lives, your destinies, your families. In Jesus' name, be released now. In the mighty name of Jesus, be released now. The Lord showed me this vision. I'm still seeing it again. Someone's mother in a hospital. I'm seeing that vision repeated. If you're connecting online, no problem. You can release your faith. Mother in a hospital. Father, in the name of Jesus, lift your hands. I pray 
Okay, those who I can pray, but then I'm extending that prayer to everyone. Your mother is in the hospital. Right now, I decree and declare, Father, let the spirit of death, the manifestation of death, hell, and the grave, in the name of Jesus, we release your mothers wherever they are. We bring them healing. We bring them life. Healing, life. Healing, life. Healing, life. Healing life. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not a prophet of doom. I will only speak as God leads me. But I want to pray for someone here. You're not going to come out. I will just pray for you. You see, it's good to be wise and it's good. As Christians, we need to be wise. I'm seeing a lady who met this man and in the name of love and relationship, you know, whatever is happening, then I'm turning and I'm seeing this man making a chant, calling the name of that person in the house of a, like a habalist, a shrine, as a sacrifice so that the person dies. So this what is supposed to look like a relationship is something that somebody will just hear that the person died and the man will say, I don't know what happened. Whereas this is evil. I'm careful to say this thing so that it doesn't look like you are promoting the devil. But sometimes God allows you to say it to let you know that wickedness is real. In the name of Jesus, anyone who laughs with you in the open, but then in the secret they are conspiring for your destruction. I call upon my God, who is also your God. I break you free from that demonic embargo. I break you free from that demonic embargo. And for this lady in question, in the name of Jesus, whatever has been done to kill you, whether by accident or whether by whatever it is, let the blood speak now. Let the blood speak now. Let the blood speak now. I want to call an uncomfortable situation, but I'm praying, I'm praying that you have the courage to receive deliverance you are not a bad person but I need to pray for you there is a spirit when it comes upon you you cannot rest till you steal you are not you are, I will not call you a thief but this is something you have tried you have cried this thing and asked God to help you I want to pray for that person please sit for a moment come whoever that person is I'm not calling you to embarrass you don't sit back there I will continue and move forward but then I want to pray for that person. I don't know who that person is, whether you are inside, you are outside. Make your way to the front. Don't be afraid. Come, let's celebrate them as they come. It takes a lot of courage. Don't be afraid. My dear, come and stand. Don't be afraid, huh? Don't sit back if you know that you should be here and to be delivered once and for all. There's nothing to be embarrassed. We're a family of faith. The Bible says, let him that thinks he stand, take heed lest he fall. So there's no laughing at anybody here. This is God bringing deliverance. Some of these people can be more innocent than many of us here. It's a spirit. There are a few people, you are not in this auditorium. Please come and join them very quickly. I want to pray before I pray for the sick. Once it comes upon you, you cannot rest until you find something to pick. It is a trap by the enemy, you see. Sometimes the devil brings people under some of these influences to destroy them. If there's somebody to stand here, run, run. If you're coming, please run and come and stand. Let's celebrate them as they come. Come. Listen, my dear people, there is nothing to be embarrassed about. I want you to know that this is a family that loves you. Nobody is calling you out here to embarrass you, no. You have come out before Jesus himself and I can assure you that your deliverance comes to an end. Your, the, the oppression comes to an end in Jesus name. Place your hand on your chest and let me pray for you. Father, the Bible says for this purpose was the son of God made manifest that he might destroy the works of the wicked. These people are sincere, I believe. This is a spirit a wicked devil that wants to destroy their destinies. Therefore, I command the spirit and the influence that makes you to not rest till you steal. I command right now, be delivered from it this moment. Release them never to return to them again. In the name of Jesus, that urge to pick things, to steal things in the name of Jesus. And you know, stealing goes hand in glove with lying. 
once you steal you most likely will tell lies too in the name of jesus i declare be delivered right now you will find out as you return that you will never never have that urge to pick anything again in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ god bless you you're coming up listen you are to come here you are strolling and i finished praying now when you be serious in the house of god come i'll pray for you hmm? once we mention your case we don't mean to embarrass you but you you, you come and receive to shame the devil once and for all. God bless you, eh, my sister. Thank you for your courage. My friend, are you coming here too? Run and come and stand. If you, we are not saying you're a thief. If you have a problem with it, we'll deal with it. Please come. We hail you. We worship you. We hail you. Most high. Now, I'm going to pray for you. You are just two years, but you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Usually, I would just do it when I'm doing a general prayer, but I'm saying this because of a peculiar situation that is currently happening in your marriage now, that if God does not arrest the situation, it can scatter that marriage. Two years, you've not had a child. Who is that person? Come. God wants to end that situation. Come. My glory... You lift my head, husband and wife. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. Husband and wife, too. Two years. Come. How many of you know that God is changing lives tonight? Hallelujah. Okay, this one still to pray. My little one, what's your name? Look at this beautiful girl. What's your name? Jessica. Jessica. Look yes, at me, darling. The devil is a liar, eh? I'm yes, going to sir. pray for you and you will never steal anything again. Yes, sir. You are a nice lady. You will become a very, very great lady. Yes, sir. This one's are, you have, you are coming out for the case I mentioned. Two years. Okay. Huh? Oh. You too. Two years. Okay, let me pray for this, my people. Father, in Jesus' name, just praying for these ones first. That spirit of stealing, in the name of Jesus, I declare you have come to open up yourself before the Lord. May he show you mercy. Amen. That wicked, satanic, demonic influence is over right now. In Jesus' name. The ones who came out here with my little daughter there, you can go back to your seat. Let's celebrate them. Then these ones, appreciate them as they go. Two years. The Lord is asking me to pray. I know there are people with more, but because of a peculiar situation I'm seeing within the family, I want to pray. My dear, look at me. This lady, shout Jesus. Jesus! Out of her now, in the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. Husband and wife. He's not here. He okay. Went, he went to the hospital. His elder brother is in the sick bed in Adgar Key Hospital, sir. We are supposed to be here together, but he's there. You believe that Jesus Christ will do a miracle for you? Yes, sir. I stretch my hands. I'm already even seeing an anointing upon Amen. you. Father, show Amen. mercy. Let this satanic thing leave this woman right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, all of you, help her, please. The Lord brought you out here to show you mercy. Hallelujah. And I want you, I hope everybody here, I'm seeing those outside in the overflows. Don't worry, stand by faith, all down to the basement, outside. I'm about to pray for you. You don't have to come here directly. Just stand there. If you are husband and wife, you stand near one another. I want to pray for you. If your spouse is not here, you can stand by faith. Hallelujah. You've heard the testimony of the lady here. You've heard many, many testimonies. Listen to me. Listen to me. There is absolutely nothing that God cannot do. Yes. Father, I stretch. Ah. Okay, let's pray. Let me first, let me first. I just saw something that looked like a dark shadow just hovering around like two of you. And I want to pray right now. I command this satanic influence right now. I declare in the name of Jesus, release them now. 
release them now. Amen. That appears to you in the dream like a man, another husband, trying to molest you. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of deep. Say, the resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands right now, according to the time of life, I decree and I declare by the God who has sent and anointed me, regardless what the situation is, in the name of Jesus, return with your miracle children. In the name of Jesus, whatever needs to leave your stomach to give space for your baby, we command that it leaves now. In the name of Jesus and for one of you the trouble you are having with your family members this is one of the reasons why I believe God acts here because I'm seeing a conversation happening and they are saying if by September we don't hear anything let's look for another person this is why God acts that we should deal with that situation because there are I don't encourage that we are believers but in the name of Jesus I decree and declare as I'm praying for them I'm praying for someone quarter to shame may God arise and vindicate you quarter to shame may my God arise and give you a testimony in the name of Jesus I declare return with your miracle children in Jesus much less name we pray amen and amen God bless you please return back to your seat I want to pray for the sick. I'm seeing... I want to pray, but I'm seeing that the Lord is asking me to pray for people with high blood pressure. High blood pressure. Stand. You know it. You, you high, any trace of BP. Please, I want to pray. Lay your hands there. Just believe. Believe. Rest. We have a lot of doctors here, but now you believe. I'm speaking to you by faith. Lay your hands there. I want to pray for you. You're outside, you're inside, across the globe following. Lay your hands. I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. High blood pressure. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, when you reveal it is for redemption, I stretch my hands over everyone here across the overflows and following from across the nations of the earth suffering from high blood pressure in the name of Jesus I decree and declare supernaturally may your blood pressure go down to normal now may your blood pressure go down to normal now may your blood pressure go down to normal now in the name of Jesus Christ now everyone who is trusting God for healing let's all rise I want to pray for the sick now Please, let's all rise if you can. The healing ministry of Jesus is real. He heals. And when he comes, he can set free. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Bible declares, with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about healing all, not some, all. They that were oppressed of the devil. Sickness is an oppression of the devil. I want you to lay your hands right now. You've heard several testimonies. Lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle. Please go ahead. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Lay your hands. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The saints and the angels bow, the redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Lay your hands. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, 
wherever you are under the sound of my voice on ground online the spirit that is back of that sickness back of that infirmity in the name of Jesus I command that you be separated from that spirit now shout a loud amen shout a loud amen again and I declare right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead and in the name of Jesus the son of the living God be healed now be healed now be healed now every blood condition be healed now HIV be healed now all kinds of blood conditions be healed now genotype issues be corrected now heart conditions be healed now bone conditions you're having a problem with any part of your joints your bones be healed now you have a problem hearing let your ears be open now I command your eyes to begin to see now in the name of Jesus every organ that has failed or is failing I declare brand new organs to your body now brand new organs to your body now brand new organs to your body now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm hearing in my spirit blocked fallopian tubes in the name of Jesus let it be open now whoever that is for let it be open now in the name of Jesus there is someone you have a problem your heart is getting enlarged you are not even aware you just know that there's severe pain and you get tired I would advise you to see a doctor but I want to pray for you now in the name of Jesus that enlarged heart I command it to come to normal in the name of Jesus Christ you are not young but you are beginning to see signs of unease that can be traceable to autism in the name of Jesus I don't know who that person is but by the power of the Holy Spirit be healed right now and speaking about autism I pray if there's anyone here who has a child or connecting across the globe with any autistic child autistic patient in the name of Jesus we restore normalcy to their minds we restore normalcy in the name of Jesus huh. the Lord is asking me to pray for a woman you have children but your prayer has been that God will give you a man child a boy and while that may be silly for others there is a serious implication to that prayer and you are praying it sincerely from your heart the Lord is saying I should stand like Eli stood to speak to Hannah that in the name of Jesus Christ may your next pregnancy be a boy as you have desired in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ someone you are having severe problems with your kidneys in the name of Jesus Christ let the power of God touch you right now supernaturally you can walk but you have excruciating pain especially around your left side in the name of Jesus Jesus is healing you right now supernaturally in Jesus name now I'm seeing a woman in my vision you sleep but if you sleep for just an hour or two when you wake up you are not able to sleep again no matter what happens you are not able to sleep I pray for that person my Bible says he giveth his beloved sleep therefore I decree and declare find sleep now in the name of Jesus Christ now whether I've mentioned your case or not by the power that raised Jesus from the dead be healed now in fact I'm seeing someone you are suffering from pneumonia pneumonia in the name of Jesus Christ be healed right now Amen. 
and there's someone you have a very serious it, this is an infection this is something that you have tried to treat it again and again and it has refused to go it's something that is very embarrassing i decree and declare in the name of jesus that shame and that reproach let it leave now once and for all in the name of jesus christ let it leave you once and for all let it leave you once and for all. Amen. Peptic ulcer, the Lord heals you now. Amen. Peptic ulcer, the Lord heals you now. Amen. There is someone, this thing happened towards the end of last year into this year. Your vision has started getting blurry. At first you started seeing like objects floating. This is what I'm seeing. And right now it looks like your right eye vision there is diminishing quite seriously. I don't know who that person is but in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I declare 20 your vision comes back to normalcy right now. I'm seeing a gentleman, I've prayed for a few people with that situation. All your teeth, your, your entire um, teeth is getting soft and it's almost like it's getting maybe some cavity problem that is affecting everything. If I don't pray for you to almost be as if you're an old person because your teeth will keep pulling out with what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where that person is, but by the power that raised Christ from the dead, this embarrassment, let it come to an end now. Let it come to an end now. There's someone you have severe heart palpitations, especially when you lie down or when you walk. Any strenuous walk, you start breathing like someone who is walking out and this thing is affecting you. You are not someone who is on the weighty side. It's just some oppression. In the name of Jesus, your entire respiratory system is sanitized now. <laughs> sanitized now. Now, whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus, hence you have come here, be completely healed. Be completely healed. Be completely healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, very quickly, I want us to take two or three minutes to pray while um, I get your prayer request here. So everyone, how many of you are here to write your requests? Sit down for a moment and let me give you a minute or two. Please finish up your request and then pass it to the person the whoever it is by the last aisle whether left or right ushers please let's do this very quickly if you are done with your prayer request just pass it to the ushers and begin to pray in the spirit as you open up your heart i'll give you a few prayer points and then when you pray i want to lay my hands on your prayer request is someone praying in the spirit you can pray in the spirit while you're writing go ahead go ahead and pray go ahead and pray Go ahead and pray. Kalibo sati frahaske de badash. Krande gada sote keleko siata. If there are no ushers close to you, just wave it. They will see it and then ushers, please identify them. Let's have someone here. By the way, you can also write quickly for someone, your, a loved one you are trusting. Go ahead. And those who are online sending your requests. And in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, we're going to be praying right now. Trusting the Lord. The Bible says, unto he that answers prayer shall all flesh come. As you are submitting it, believe by faith that this that you are writing, you heard the testimony of the gentleman, that every single thing, every single thing, it is very possible that every single thing can be solved. According to Genesis chapter 24 and verse 1. Genesis 24 and verse 1 and Abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Bible says the Lord had blessed him in all things not some things in all things someone is praying in the spirit you are crying out and you are saying Lord in this season and in this special miracle service I'm trusting you that every single thing I have written every single desire you are praying now Mark eleven twenty four, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, What things soever ye desire. He says, When ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and thou shalt have them. When we have the prayer request, please quickly, let's begin to bring them so that we can pray. 
I want to take some time and seriously pray on these requests. I love to pray on the requests because it's the most accurate representation of your desires. There's a lady waving her hands there. There are people waving their hands. Ushers, please identify them. All the overflows down to the basement outside. Let's be sure that um, we get it as, as fast as possible. Give me a testimony. Someone is praying. Give me a testimony. Proof that I encountered your grace. Proof that I encountered your power. Give me a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give me a testimony. Give me a testimony. I'm seeing the kind of fire that you see on a candle. I'm seeing it come on four people while you are praying right now. Four people. And the Lord is saying he's igniting the next dimension of your life and ministry. Four people. Four people. This is what I see in my visions. I release it. I release it. That fire. In the name of Jesus. I release it by the power that raised Christ from the dead. I open you up by this fire to a new dimension. A new dimension, a new experience in the spirit. My God, a new experience. Neither do men light a lamp. Ah, there will not be silence in your life again. It's time to begin to make news for the kingdom. That unction that is coming upon you from heaven. Empowering you by the spirit of the living God. A new chapter in your life. A new chapter in ministry. A new chapter in your endeavors. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The grace of God speaking fully, speaking fully. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Wherever I am afraid. I will trust in you, I will trust in you, let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord, I will trust in you. I want you to write it in two weeks a supernatural job is coming I saw it in the spirit write it down I speak to you by the God who has sent me eight people the Lord showed me in I'm not saying one month I'm not saying three weeks in two weeks let me say it again in the name of Jesus Christ it will surprise you how God will do it Listen, despise not prophesying. The word of God is powerful. Let me say it again. There are eight people the Lord showed me in two weeks. In the name of Jesus, my God will give you a job that will surprise you. For some of you, you, you will be one of you. You will be the first out of five people. Who is going to have that job? You are five. I'm seeing you will be the first out of five people that all graduates, all doing well, but it looks like a job. The only person I think one of you works maybe with one telecommunications company, and that was it. But my God is giving you a job that will surprise you. <laughs> Hallelujah. You believe that? There's someone here, the Lord is speaking to me that he's going to connect you to the governor of your state. Yeah. Hear what I'm telling you. 
there is a vacancy for you God himself is going to put don't think I'm just speaking no believe it I'm saying it again that the Lord is connecting you to the governor of your state king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon the king sent for Joseph I'm saying this because I'm seeing destiny about to happen for someone that listen listen before you say amen that somebody you did not expect listen just believe me the person is not going to send for you by somebody else he will get your number by himself and you are going to see a call Mark my words and mark what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is, but I prophesy, let it be so for you. By this divine connection, may destiny happen for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please help them. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone you're watching me from the United Kingdom right now. You're watching me from the United Kingdom. God is shifting you from UK to US. This is where I see that your destiny is. Listen, you're watching me from the United Kingdom. Husband and wife, two of you are watching me as I'm speaking to you now. The Lord is telling me that he's relocating you from US, from UK to US because he wants to connect you to destiny Joseph had to leave his father's house to go to Egypt because that was the place of destiny in the name of Jesus may God make that happen for you and let me use that opportunity and speak listen I wrote about five scriptures here be patient with me tonight when I pray on this I'm going to read those scriptures and speak them into your life they all came in the place of prayer. It's not something that I just sat down and invented. They were words that God gave me to speak the blessing upon you. Hallelujah. But let me pray for someone. If you are in the wrong location, I stand by God and I pray. Hear me. Believe this. This is a very serious prayer. You can be diligent in the wrong place and never receive a harvest. I'm saying it again. If you are in the wrong location, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I relocate you to the place of destiny. 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 Place of destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are abroad and your destiny is in Nigeria, I bring you back in Jesus' name. If you are here and your destiny is in another nation, I don't care how you will get there. By God, and once it is scriptural, may my God push you there. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. Hallelujah. I want you by faith, whether you are sitting or standing, stretch your hands towards this request. And I want you to begin to make faith declarations. These are not rituals, ladies and gentlemen. There is power being invested here as we pray. Go ahead. As I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, lifting up this prayer request, not because you cannot approach God directly, but he has granted grace. He said, brethren, pray for us. Men can be prayed for. People can stand based on their covenant with God and they can agree as touching important matters in your life. Someone begin to make declarations. Lord, I have brought this prayer request as proof of my faith is someone praying now I'm going to go on my knees as I pray on this for you and I want you to believe in the next one minute everyone is praying 
in the name of Jesus Christ Shako Saparis Kadeleka Parusa Tiata Embra Teke Parakatosha de Brakati Balakosiata In your name I come alive to declare your victory The resurrected King is resurrected King By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I decree and declare that every request that has been here written as an act of your faith, in the name of Jesus, the resurrected King, I declare, let it return to you as testimonies. Let it return to you as testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it return to you as testimonies. Everyone here appointed unto death in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. By reason of this prayer, we avert death from your life. We avert death from your family in the name of Jesus. And prophetically, I stand upon this request and I declare in the name of Jesus, these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. You will see them no more forever. You will see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please stand on your feet and be ready to shout a believing amen. The blessing is conferred upon people by saying. The Bible says, and he blessed them and said. Listen, I've told you that the blessing is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit. It comes upon your life alongside every kind of spiritual impartation. They answer to words and they answer to faith. Words mixed with faith. Hallelujah. A few scriptures and I will speak over your life. Please, I want you to receive it. I want you to believe it. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 9. Media, let's walk together very quickly. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 9. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land. It says, For the Lord again will rejoice over thee for good. In the name of Jesus. Therefore I prophesy, let plenty locate you. Ah. Someone is receiving. Let plenty locate you. In this season, I drive scarcity from you. Let the covenant of plenty find expression in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy 7.15. 7.15. Deuteronomy 7.15. The Lord will take away from thee all sickness. And will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee Amen. and will lay them upon them that hate thee Amen. therefore I decree and declare 
in the name of Jesus for you and for your loved ones I declare be free from sickness and infirmity <laughs> Isaiah 54 17 Isaiah 54 17 no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn therefore I decree and declare no matter how that weapon comes in the name of Jesus it will not find expression in your life <laughs> Isaiah 58 11 58 11 Isaiah it says the Lord shall guide thee continually is someone shouting aloud amen. amen every confusion every misdirection in your life going to the wrong places and finding out you are just wasting time find accuracy of direction now amen. let's finish the scripture and satisfy your soul in famine amen. and make fat your bones amen. that thou shalt be like a well a watered garden like a spring of waters whose waters fail not i prophesy supplies to your life in the name of jesus christ psalm 86 and verse 17 give us an amplified please psalm 86 and verse 17 86 17 he said show me a sign of your evident goodwill and favor that those who hate me may sit and be put to shame listen he said because you lord will show your approval of me when you help and comfort me he says show me a sign the sign that god needs to show in your life to bring to an end the shame and the mockery may god show that sign this week may god show that sign this week may my god show that sign this week in the name of jesus christ Listen, they looked at Elisha and they were wondering, could this be the person to succeed Elisha? He did not look like it. But when a sign came upon him, the Bible says he turned the sign was to part Jordan. And when he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And Jordan parted Hitha and Titha. The prophet saw and they said, truly, the spirit of Elijah don't rest upon Elijah. I don't know what sign God needs to show in your life to let everyone know that finally favor has landed, to let everyone know that finally speed has landed. But I say again, this week, may God show that sign. This week, may my God show that sign in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm Isaiah 43 and verse 4. 43, 4. Isaiah 43 and verse 4 43 and verse 4 do we have that projected it says since thou was precious in my sight thou has been honorable and I have loved thee therefore will I give men for thee and people for your life listen do you know what this means? Listen to my message, the gift of men. You are as wealthy as the men God brings in your life. You are not just as wealthy as the things. When you have things, you are limited. Things cannot love you. Things cannot be there for you. When God really wants to help a man, he gives that man men. Let me speak over someone. You have things, but you lack men. I pray for you. Men, that includes helpers. Men, that includes comforters. Men, that includes financiers. Men, that includes prophetic people to speak. This week, may God bring quality men to show up in your life. May God bring quality men to show up in your life. In the name of Jesus. Finally, Numbers chapter 6 from verse 24. Numbers 26, 24. The Lord bless thee. Ah, you didn't hear that. The Lord bless thee. The Lord bless thee. The Lord keep thee. Listen, do you know what it means for God to keep? You have to make reference to John 17 and verse 1. 
he says he came to him and he said glorify now thy son that thy son may bring glory to you when you read down to verse 6 it says all that you have given me I have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition he says look for it I it's somewhere there John 17 all that you have given me I have kept he says and none is lost except the son of perdition and that's that the scripture might be fulfilled he said but what I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day so when he says the Lord keep you it means that you are engraved in the palm of his hands beyond the reach of curses beyond the reach of all kinds of demonic things now that you understand let me say it again the Lord keep you the Lord keep you 25 the Lord make his face to shine upon you Listen, do you know what this means? Every time you hear the face of God shining upon a man, that is favor. You find that in the life of Moses. You find that in Psalm 44 and verse 3. Give it to us very quickly. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand and thy arm and the light of thy countenance. That is how they became possessors. So when he says, may he make his face shine upon you, it's another way of saying, may you be covered completely with the favor of God. I pray for you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 26. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The last blessing right here. Is something money cannot buy hear me the last blessing right here is something education cannot buy the last blessing right here is something your intellectual pedigree cannot buy the Bible says and give thee is a gift if you are not given you cannot have it and give thee peace listen I've told you my highest definition of success is not progress is peace no matter what else you have in your life if it is at the expense of your peace it was not worth it no wonder Jesus himself is called the Prince of Peace he says peace I give you my peace I live with you not as the world gives there is a kind of peace that he gives you that surpasses all understanding I'm praying for you in this troubled world in the midst of the turbulence that is depressing people saddled with fear saddled with all kinds of um, all kinds of things may the peace of God be given to you this night may the peace of God be given to you this night in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ where you have been crawling I place an anointing upon you. Begin to fly like the eagles. Begin to fly like the eagles. Hear me. Whatever has covered your glory, covered your visibility, so that those who need you and have what it takes to honor God in your life cannot find you. In the name of Jesus, I tear off that veil now. I tear off that veil now. Find visibility. Find visibility, find visibility in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Why have you been here 38 years? I have no man to help me. Not that the water cannot be reached. I have no man. Where is somebody who is in need of one man? One man who becomes a helper to say, what is your issue? Oh, a job? See me tomorrow. Where is the one man who is saying, what is your issue? Oh, a visa? Come and see me next week. I pray for you. The one man sent by God to be a destiny helper to your life in this season. Wherever they are, I gravitate them towards your destiny. <laughs> Hallelujah. Three more prayer points. Everything that has died in your life, chiefest among them your prayer life and your passion for God. Perhaps you came here and it looks like everything God is dying or has died in your life. 
because you see when prayer dies your passion for God dies your passion for the word dies eventually every other thing begins to die that is the central point of victory in your life your relationship with Jesus enhanced by your prayer enhanced by your word study enhanced by your passion for the house of God your submission to doctrine and learning let me pray for you tonight Jesus is called the resurrection and the life everything dead everything dying in the name of Jesus I use the words of Jesus Talitha Kumi it, although it was for a little girl but I pray for every situation that has died let it come back to life now let it come back to life now let it come back to life now dead prayer life come forth dead word study life come forth dead passion for the things of God come forth in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah can I pray for your finances will it mean anything to you if you experience a higher level of the blessing of the Lord on that wise You need money you. let me tell you period it's as simple as that there is no other way around it money is not everything but as far as the matters of economy is concerned you will be surprised how crippled your life will be are we together now the person who is sick cannot reach the hospital but the person who is poor everything you need is around you but the wherewithal to make it yours that is even more disastrous if you bring something for a sick person to eat, the person may not have the energy. So it's not an issue of is that the appetite is not there. But a poor man will pass every shop available, everything available, but the means to connect it to your destiny is not there. And remember, when we talk about finances, I will emphasize again that this is not some mundane, carnal quest for materialism. But let me tell you, I'm a responsible man of God and I believe in responsible Christianity that administers to you the whole counsel of God. Anyone who tells you to downplay the relevance of finances is joking first with himself and then you. Are we together? The name of Jesus Christ is very heavy. It takes financial resources to take it high enough for the nations to see. The needs that surround your life, most of us here, if we were to read your prayer request, over 70 to 80% of them will largely be dependent on finances. Finance is very important because it can solve so many things. Cannot give you peace, but it can enhance the atmosphere that gives you peace. Let me tell you, one of the reasons, one of the ways you become a peacemaker on earth is to have the means to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what be, if you are owing Caesar doesn't matter your relationship with God as far as Caesar is concerned the tribute collectors will come to disgrace you when Jesus was ministering they came and said you claim to be a man teaching righteousness yet you are owing the law so you must know how to give to Caesar what belongs Jesus acknowledged that there are some things that belong to Caesar I want to pray for you the kind of Christian experience where you love Jesus Christ, but then you are being incapacitated economically. I've told you that many people, because of this economic backwardness, it can tilt you towards the corridors of compromise. God can bless you, so bless you, eh, that you solve your financial problems. It does not become a concern again. Your concern now becomes building destiny and the purposes of God. Thinking about money day and night is idolatry, is a curse. It was never supposed to be that way. There is nobody, an intelligent God will not design a human being to be obsessed and thinking about money because what you think about that worry is a kind of worship. Are we together? It says, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable. Many believers love the Lord, but this finance thing, especially within the, you know, you do not want to compromise your faith, but then... It must finance, listen, until you know how to force finance to answer. Especially co-laborers, those who are in ministry here, listen to me. In all you're getting, trust God for grace to sort this money thing once and for all. This is not an issue of pride. This is, this is until that is solved, I guarantee you, there is a, a, a kind of concentration you will never have as far as destiny is concerned. Are we together? The absence of finance is one of the biggest sponsors of compromise, even in our world today. 
Many people who love the Lord are forced to bend over and compromise. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus. It says, having obtained help from the Lord, I continue to this day. I pray for someone. The dimension of wealth you have not seen. I call upon my God, the God of Jeshurun, the one who rides upon the wings of the wind. May my God surprise you. 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 Open up strange financial gates for you. Connect you to strategic helpers. Give you wisdom to manage and multiply your resources. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. And your acquisition of financial resources will not be at the expense of your relationship with Jesus. The wealthier you are, the more passionate you will be about the things of God. With it, you will be a blessing to many. With it, you will be a blessing to yourself. Listen, I'm not praying for you for money to just buy tea and bread. You don't need my prayer for that to happen. Just be valuable. I'm praying for you to become a trustee. A trustee of the wealth of the kingdom. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads. We walk through water and through fire. And thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. A man can be helped by God. May that be your portion. Now, finally, you have honored me. You have prayed for me. I, have, I understand there are many prayer groups that have prayed, prayed and fasted for days. Just lifting me before the Lord. Whatever gift you give me. Is, there's, there's only so much I can do but that prayer you have prayed for me I just want to speak one prayer from my heart one prayer from my heart and you care to receive it I want to pr I'm going to pray for you no no you don't have to kneel please stand but it is from the depth of my heart every man has a covenant with God there are secrets that make for the rising of men there are things God is always telling us in every season and when he sends a word to Jacob he lights it upon Israel I truly want to pray that one prayer with that we'll wrap up the service but I want you to receive it if this is the only reason why you have come here tonight your coming will be worth it if you do receive this hallelujah can I pray that prayer for you father there is a grace called favor you have helped me, you have made me to become an, an expression of your favor. That it is true, you can pick a man and place that grace upon him. My Bible says, and Jesus increased in wisdom, stature, favor with God and with men. You have helped me. In the name of Jesus, from the abundance of that which God has given, I stretch my hands on this day to as many who will care to receive from tonight, carry that grace evidently. <laughs> 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 Carry that grace evidently. Number two, God can empower you to walk signs and wonders, but he can make you a sign and a wonder. He says, I and the children that the Lord has given me, he didn't say we will produce, he said we are, that your life becomes a living epistle. I'm praying for you. The grace that makes ordinary men to become global phenomenons. The, 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 the grace that can make an ordinary man to become a sign and a wonder. Wherever you are, I impart that grace upon you. I impart that grace upon you. Let the nations hear your voice. Let the nations see the hand of God upon your life. I impart that grace upon you. Carry that grace evidently in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I want to release that grace for honor. You see, it takes honor for a generation to listen to you. It takes honor for a generation to, to, to acknowledge the hand of God upon your life. 
Joshua was full of the spirit already but he told Moses take some of your honor and place upon him so that the children of Israel will hearken to him being skillful and gifted is wonderful but that is not enough to command the attention of a generation being honest and a person of integrity is not enough you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is conferred upon you by another in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for someone tonight may this mantle of honor that can cause all and sundry to acknowledge God in your life and to reward you as matching your true worth may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you So shall it be in Jesus name now just one instruction everyone please listen um, thank you for all of you who made so many cakes I decided to pack all those cakes to bring it here not everybody can have a piece but at let's focus on our children first hallelujah so all my little children little take note of the word little all my little children you have a piece of this cake as many as can go around when they are done then maybe some other people so make sure you have it take it as communion that God will bless you please parents do allow your children to just pick a piece the welfare would be glad to communicate it to them and then they'll be on their way going um, I'm told that some of you may have come with gifts now my I sincerely appreciate you but we may not all have all the time to receive it personally please know that I do not take you for granted you can meet the PR they have made a provision for as many of you maybe a gift or whatever you can drop it with them they are people of integrity you can be sure that they will be they would be glad to communicate it hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now please be seated for one more minute you are here and the greatest honor I can give the Lord tonight is to present a soul in addition to all that has happened you are in this place tonight and whilst you heard me speak the Holy Ghost began to convict you and you are saying apostle I know time is fast spent but give me an opportunity to make it right with Jesus two calls in one perhaps you are here and you've given Jesus Christ your heart truly but as it is your life has gone haywire and you need restoration wherever you are please give me the honor to lead you to Jesus one last time before we leave leave your seat as I count one to five and please make your way very boldly and confidently thank you they are coming already koinonia is this the best you can do the greatest miracle for this night come the hymn writer says must I go and empty-handed must I meet my Savior soul he says not one soul which wish to greet him must I empty-handed go come come God bless you Jesus has given you a new beginning no matter how it's been I promise you that he's able to give you a new beginning the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away come very boldly to the throne of grace that you will obtain mercy and find help in time of need if you're coming please make it quickly I want to pray right now those who are falling online all the overflows here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life thank you so much for those of you who have come out indicating your interest to start a fresh relationship with Jesus can you lift your right hand please above your head as a sign of surrender and say this after me let it be from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I make Jesus Lord of my life and I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight until forever I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones by the power of the Holy Spirit I decree and declare that based on the integrity of scripture your sins are forgiven I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is hereby broken over your life in the name of Jesus eternal life is imparted to your spirit and from tonight I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus you go forward ever and backward never 
for in Jesus mighty and matchless name we pray amen and amen please do well to just move to my right there are counselors waving the placard they'll have a minute with you very quickly and you'll be back to your seat let's honor them as they go hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you